Praise God. Good morning, everyone. Praise God. Welcome to the Shepherd House. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. We're so glad to have you all here. Amen. Praise God. We are looking for a great time in the Lord. I'm expecting God to speak to our hearts today. I'm expecting God to show up with his presence. Amen. Praise God. And I tell you what, I'm looking forward to God speaking to us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I hope and praise God you got your, your Bible belts on. Praise God. So we can go in deep into the service this morning. But first of all, we're going to have our devotions. And praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to start off, praise the Lord, in prayer with yours truly. I'm Pastor Dr. Martiel Finney, and it's so good, praise God, to be a servant of the Most High God, hallelujah, and being obedient and doing what he wants me to do. And I thank God for that, praise God. So let's close our eyes, amen, and bow our heads, and let's go before the Lord, hallelujah. Father God, we just want to thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning and putting us in our right mind and clothing us in our bodies, Lord God, and giving us the activity of our limbs. You, we want to say thank you this morning. Thank Hallelujah. You, this is Thanksgiving season, Father God, and we praise your holy name, Lord God. We give you, Lord God, praise, and we adore you, Father. We ask you to bring, Lord God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost into the service today. Hallelujah. Help us, O oh Lord God, to praise you. Help us, O oh Lord, to adore you. Help us, O oh Lord God, and anoint us, O oh Lord, with the word of God. Anoint us, O oh Lord God Jesus, to be the servants of the most high God. We want your presence here. We want to be thankful. We want to give you praise, O oh Lord God. Bless us today as we praise you and adore you, Father God. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And let the church say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have our welcome. Praise God and scripture reading by Brother Finney. And then we're going to have our greetings by Sister Annie Robinson. And we're going to have an announcement by Sister LaDebra Todd. We thank the Lord for them. Amen. So govern yourselves accordingly. Praise God in that order. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Brother Finney. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Shepherd House. May God bless each and every one of you that are here. And may God bless the ones that are not here. Amen. And God. the scriptures are going to be coming from Exodus 16, 1 through 15. Exodus chapter 16, verses 1 through 15. And the word reads, The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt, in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we have died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Verses 4 and 5. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they all prepared what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. Verses 6 through 8. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, You will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Verses 9 and 10. Then Moses told Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. Verses 11. 
The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight you will eat meat, mm -hmm. and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Right. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Oh God. Yeah. Verses 13 through 15. <laughs> that evening, quail came and covered the camp. Mm -hmm. In the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. Mm -hmm. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Mm -hmm. Moses said to them, it is the bread of the Lord has given you to eat. Mm -hmm. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bless you, Brother Kenny. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Mm. Good morning. Good morning. Give it all praise and honor to our Heavenly Father, to my pastor, Reverend Martel Feeney. On behalf of the Shepherd House, we welcome you to join us in praising God in his sanctuary. Amen. Come, let us rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let us shout for joy for the Lord. <coughs> Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Let us give thanks in all circumstances, yes. for this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. Yes. For our Lord is great and is above all God. Oh, yes. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Yes. Read the shepherd how truly welcomed you. May God bless you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank Glory to Thank God. You. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Mm. Well, good morning. Good morning. I did print all of my announcements out, and they're sitting on my table. <laughs> Just so y'all, so if I mess up, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> as we all know, the CDC has mandated masks. So we would appreciate it very much if, as you come in and as you go out, if you'd wear your mask. Amen. Once you've sat next to someone and you're, you're comfortable, you're more than welcome to take it off. If you need a mask or hand sanitizer or any kind of wipes, they're sitting over on the table. Yes. You're more than welcome to them. Yes. Amen. Let's see. And, and for all the board members, we have a meeting this coming Friday, Skype meeting, at 10 o'clock. All right? God. And we have Bibles. So if any of you would like to use a Bible as we're going through our scripture, you're more than welcome to use them. They're also sitting on the table. Bring you one. Um, let's see. Oh, and Sylvia, the lady over here with the beautiful gray hair, is our, is our, um, is our prayer team member, uh, leader. Please call her. She'll set you up. Please call her with all your prayer requests. Yeah. Yeah. And Amen. let's see. Once again, if anyone has a birthday, we'd love to recognize your birthdays. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, because he's my great-grandson, I'll mention my great-grandson's birthday. Caden Munlock has a birthday, yeah. November 13th. Yeah. And please don't forget, today, whether we like it or not, it's trick-or-treat. And there's a lot of children out there that are just going to enjoy all that candy and all that good fun. And, you know, if you're out and about, please make sure that you keep an eye out for these children yes. so that no one gets hurt. Yeah, yeah. They come to your house, yeah. throw something at them. Yeah. <laughs> In their little buckets, y'all. Okay? God bless each and every one of you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Throw something at them. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I like that. Amen. Praise God. Thank all of you all. Praise God. I want to thank Brother Finney for that uh, reading of the Word of God and that welcome. And thank Sister Annie for that lovely, praise God, uh, greeting. Praise God. Amen. Praise God that she gave us. Amen. Praise God. And thank Deborah for all the announcements. 
Praise God. We govern ourselves according to all the announcements. Amen. Praise God. Amen. There's a lot to do in it. Praise God. But God is blessing us to get it done. Amen. Praise God. I'm not complaining. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I thank the Lord for all the announcements. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have testimony service. Amen. Testimony service is open to each and every one of you, and I know all of you should have a testimony. Praise God. Hallelujah. I believe in testimonies. Praise God. I tell you, testimonies strengthen me. When I hear you, praise God, talk about the goodness of the Lord, that's, that's my strength. Amen. And it's so good. You think COVID is teaching us a spiritual truth? I think so. Jesus. I really do think that. After reading this lesson and comparing this lesson, praise God, yes, I do. It's testing time. Yes, it is. We're going to prove it in the word of God today. The reason we need to remove the worms and maggots out of our manner so we can receive God's spiritual truth. Mm -hmm. You can't receive nothing if you're grumbling and complaining. If my mouth is open and I ain't praising God, then it's just noise. <laughs> come on, come on, say to God, it's the truth. Amen. While Jesus lived on earth, the Jews challenged him to prove them that he was who he claimed to be. Yes, Lord. They suggest that if he had really been sent by God, he would give them manna from heaven to eat. Like Moses had given their forefathers in John 6, 31. Mm -hmm. According to John 6, 31. In response, Jesus told them that God, not Moses, had given their fathers bread in the wilderness. He also told them that the manna served as even a greater purpose than that of feeding the people. He told them that the manna represented him. Mm -hmm. The manna represented Jesus. Yeah. Jesus claimed that he was the bread of life according to John 6 32. Mm -hmm. Jesus identified himself as the ancient manna that fed Israel. Yeah. Now when the people of Israel first encountered the title of uh, the little pieces of bread lying on the ground, they looked at it and called it manna. The word manna, like I said, means it. I want to show you what the manna was and why it represented Jesus in this sermon today. Let's notice a few facts about the manna today. It may be that God will use this passage to help us to come to know Jesus Christ yes, better. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And no. Hindrance in our walk can be removed out of our walk. Yeah. Number one, in your outline I sent you, number one, it's, it is a conception picture of Jesus Christ. Manna is a conception picture, conception picture of Jesus Christ. The idea of the manna originated with God. It's conception. It was not man's idea. Conception. All those people of Israel couldn't think uh, of was food that they had left behind in Egypt. All they could think about it was the steaks they left in Egypt. Yeah. 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 Oh boy, we had shrimp and, and uh, jambalaya, and we had steaks and uh, souffle, and we, we had all kinds of delicacy foods we left behind to come out here and eat this little round wafer called manna, called it. What is it? By sending the manna, God totally removed man from the equation here. Yes. This is Jesus' conception here. Mm -hmm. You see, the manna was free for all the people who had, all everybody had to stoop down to get it. Mm -hmm. You think God, praise God, could have gave them something while they were standing up? They could just catch it. You got to stoop down to get it. You know what he's telling you? We got to kneel on our knees. Praise God. Our battle should be fought on our knees. We're in a fight right now. We're in a COVID battle right now. And the best way to fight it is on our knees and stop grumbling about it. The best way to fight it is on our knees. We've had so many examples throughout the Bible showing us that we need to pray before we grumble. God ain't scared of your grumbling. It doesn't frighten him. Jesus. He's not afraid of your threats. It doesn't frighten him. Yeah. We need to pray and ask God. Lord, what lesson? This is my, my question. 
Lord, what lesson do you want me to learn in all of this? What lesson you got for my family to learn in all of this? What lesson do you have for my husband and I as leaders and heads of our household to learn in all of this? Jesus. You know what he said? Get on your knees and just pray. Be obedient and stop complaining. You said something, Sister Ann, in your testimony. God got this. I believe that. God got it. Amen. I, do, I believe that. So, the, you know, I'm learning. I've noticed here lately, the less I complain, the more I hear from God. The less I'm grumbling, you know, I, I can hear from God. You know why? Because my mouth not moving. I'm, 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 I'm listening. I'm listening. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. God's given me some resolve for some things. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I look at this lesson, this, this sermon today. You see, the manna was free to all the people. The manna was also the gift of free grace. The manna was the gift of free grace. Yes, take those notes. They deserve judgment and death. These people deserve, de deserve judgment and death. They complain. They criticize. They criticize everything Moses did, everything Moses said. Praise God. All they did was criticize. Wanted to go back to Egypt. But God gave them, praise God, life. So get the worms and the maggots out of the manna. Yes. Stoop down and pray and get your humble manna blessing. Yes. Yes. This is exactly what God has done in the area of salvation. Left himself, man will seek out a religious experience that satisfies, gratifies the flesh. This is what I'm learning here. Man would all would have never conceived a plan that demanded nothing of man. Man wants to work. Man wants to earn his own salvation by good works. Man likes to brag about what he does and his accomplishments. Man likes to flaunt his achievements. Yeah. That is not God's plan. According to Ephesians 2 and 8, it's not in 9. God's plan for us, praise God, for man is to come to him through Jesus Christ and yes. through Jesus Christ alone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not Jesus and your job. Not Jesus and your income. He wants us to come to Jesus Christ alone. Yes. No other, no other leader, no other, praise God, provider. Jesus Christ alone. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's no other plan of salvation, praise God, hallelujah, that will save the human soul but Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Yeah. Yeah. John 14 and 6 says this, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me, Jesus Amen. said. Acts 4 and 12 says, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven, hallelujah, to yeah. give unto which by men can be saved. But yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. that's the only name, praise God, yeah. under the earth, in the earth, around the earth, around the world, yeah. that people can be saved. Mm -hmm. Acts 16 and 31 says, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. I do believe because I'm saved, my husband's saved. I believe that my children are eventually going to give all of them, going to give their heart to the Lord. Yeah. I really do believe that. Yeah. I might be gone on, praise God, and hallelujah to my glory. Praise God, hallelujah. Amen, praise God. But I believe they're going to give their heart Jesus. to the Lord because I poured into them while they were young. That's right. That's right. That's why we, we want to pour into little Katie. Praise God. That's Train right. him up. Amen. Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus. We want him to, praise God, train his family up one day. Yes. Praise God to be yes. saved. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Yes. What you pour into him now is what he's going to pour into his children later. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. So, we look at this. Manna has a, number two. Look at number two. On your outline. Manna has the characteristics of Jesus. It does. Let's go through it and see. Remember, manna means it. What is it? It means what is it? Let's look at the characteristics. Its appearance. Look at. Let's look at the appearance of manna. The way manna looked. Praise God. And painted a picture. It paints a picture of Jesus Christ. It was small. The manna. I wish I had a little wafer. It was small. 
It's small. Manna is small. It was a small. It represents Jesus now. It was small. How did Jesus come to us? He came to us as a babe. Small babe. This speaks of his humility. He came as a small babe. Yeah. He is the creator of the universe. John 1 and 3 tells us that. Praise God. Yes. He is God Almighty. John 1 and 1 tells us that. Yet he came into the world and was robbed and robbed himself with human flesh. Jesus. He didn't have to come in human flesh. Yeah. He could have come as God Almighty. But he came in human flesh so he can experience the pain that we experience. So yes. he can experience the hurt yes. that we experience. Yes, yes, yes. And he wanted to feel our infirmities. Yeah. That's humility. Yeah. Do you want to feel somebody else's pain that's going through COVID? I don't think so. Mm -mm. But Jesus came as a human yes. to experience our pain and our yes. hurt. He humbled himself and became a servant so that he might die for his people on the cross. Yeah. What love, what grace, what supreme. You might not think much of me, but Jesus thought I was to die for. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put that on the t-shirt. Mm -hmm. yeah. Praise God. Honey. You might not think much of me, but Jesus thought I was to die for. Come on, oh, glory to God. Come on, hallelujah. God. Praise God. Don't shout words yeah. to me. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The second a aspect of this wafer, it was round. Yeah. It was round like a circle. The circle has no ending and has no beginning, does it? You can't see where it starts and you can't see where Jesus was like that. He had no beginning and he had no ending. Yeah. Praise God. He's eternal. Jesus Christ is eternal. He did not have his beginning at Bethlehem, but was able to proclaim before Abraham was, I am. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said that in John 8, 15. And just as he had no beginning, he should have no ending. Ain't no ending to him. He ain't dead. A lot of people think he dead. It's still in the tomb. Yeah. He ain't there. There's no beginning and no end to a circle. Yes. Or a round object. Yeah. Hebrews 7 25 says, Our Savior is eternal. Yes, he is. The third aspect attribute. It was white. It was a little white wafer. Mm -hmm. White like the purest snow. Yeah. Still represents Jesus here. The witness of the manna speaks of purity of Jesus. He was born into this world without uh, taint or human sin. Jesus. He had no sin. He knew no sin. He never sinned. First Peter uh, 2 and 22 and 1 John 3 and 5 and, and Hebrews 7 and 26 tells us that. In fact, he was not even able to sin. He lived without sin so that he might die for our sins on the cross. Yeah. Hebrews 9 and 26 says that. Only a sinless man could do that. Jesus had no worms in his maggot. That's why he could do it. Yeah. He had no, uh, uh, no, no worms and, uh, and, and no uh, 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 maggots in his uh, manner. Praise God. That's why he could do it. Yeah. Remember the, it's called it. Mm -hmm. The next uh, attribute. It, it, it's appeal of it, the appeal of it. God designed the man in such a way that it was a blessing to everyone who ate it. Remember, they were told not to, when they went out there to eat that manna, they were told, just gather what you can eat for the day. Yes. I don't care how much they gathered for that day, they had to eat it. Mm -hmm. They couldn't save it for the next day. Mm -hmm. yes. Jesus. They couldn't save it for the next day. You know, God told us, praise God, that uh, to prepare for the day. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow take care of it. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. It was sweet. The manna was sweet. Look at the peel of it. It was sweet. And I love sweets. I love sweets. I love um, these old-fashioned donuts. I love licorice. The red one. Um, what else I like? Oh, uh, I like sweets. I like pound cake. Homemade pound cake. Amen. Praise God. This, the taste of this manna was like taste in wafers made with honey. No doubt it was pleasant surprise to everyone who placed, praise God, hallelujah, it on their tongue. This is a great picture of the Lord Jesus Christ here. Yeah. To the sinner, Jesus appears to be a harsh, cosmic killjoy. I want you to listen to this. Who delights in keeping people from having fun. But when you come to know him, you find that he is a delight to the soul. Yes, yes, yes. I 
tell you what, I used to think that too when I was a little girl before I got saved. Oh, I don't want to go to church. Them church girls don't look like they have no fun. <laughs> I have fun. I go to the socials at school. And praise God, I, I go to the juke joints and I dance. You know, them church girls don't do that. They ain't have no fun. Praise God, God started dealing with me. Because I love to dance. That was mine. That, I, I, I think that was mine. Oh, my God. 
thinking they know it all. Yes. Thinking they know it all. We don't know nothing. We need to lean on Jesus Christ's understanding and not our own understanding. The Bible tells us that. Lean not to our own understanding. We got to lean on Jesus. That's where we at right now. And the church, I'm going to tell you, people are looking at the church right now. The church has the opportunity to be the church more than ever right now where we at. We can save souls right now where we at. Because people are looking for somebody to give them the truth. They're looking for somebody to point them in the right direction. If you listen to this and if you hear me, I'm pointing you to Jesus Christ and his righteousness. That's the only one that I know that can fix us. That's the only one that I know that can fix this thing. That's the only one that I know that can solve this problem that we got. Go back to the basics. Go back to the basics. I want you to note this. My thoughts. Note this. First, according to uh, Exodus 16, 16 through 18, no matter how much man or person gathers, they always have the right amount for that day. When you come to Jesus, you will find that he is sufficient to save your soul. He's all sufficient to save your soul. But they could not store any manna for the next day because it was spoiled. Yeah. It get maggots in it. Mm -hmm. That manna was spoiled if they tried to suppress it. Why? Jesus told them not to. Right. Don't store it up. Praise God. God always take care of you today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Secondly, according to Numbers 18, 11 and 18, I'm sorry, Numbers 11 and 8, after two years, some people got tired of the man. They tried to trick. They tried to trick, praise God, and change the flavor of it. Uh-oh, we get in trouble when we do that, don't we, saints? God then gave us some instructions to do, praise God, and we're going to go and change God's plan. Oh, my God. Instead of improving the taste, their attempt to make the manner better ruined the taste. When man adds alterations to God's plan and message to make it more appealing, he robs it of the saving power. Yeah. When man tries to change God's plans and direction and his instructions, you rob God's saving power from your life. The gospel is sufficient just like it is according to Romans 1 and 16. So get the worms and the maggots out of our manner. 
on my noon hour, praise God, and I would get down on my knees in that church and pray. There was a, one other sister sometime would join me, and that was Sister Irma Bob. She'd gone on to be my glory now, praise God. She would join me, and sometimes she couldn't. But I tell you what, those were the best praying moments of my life when I was seeking and caring for the Holy Spirit. Seeking and caring for the Holy Spirit. God saw me following his instructions. Because he told me to seek me. I said, Lord, how? Seek me in prayer. And I did that. I sought him in prayer. Every opportunity, every moment I could, I sought the Lord in prayer. After I get done praying and snotting and crying and, 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 and swiping, praise God, I'd be on the floor, praise God, in that wooden floor at that church, praise God. I have to freshen myself back up before I go to work. But honey, I tell you what, God had wore me out. By the time I got up, the Holy Spirit had wore me out because prayer is power. Prayer, praise God. It weakens you, mm -hmm. but it strengthens you too. Amen. If y'all know what I'm saying, praise God. Yeah. I was weak in my body, praise God, but I was strengthening my spirit. Amen. Praise God. Yes. I felt like, praise God, I was a weapon. Praise God. Hallelujah. It can fight off the enemy's tears. I thank God for those type of moments. I thank God, praise God, for molding me like that. It made me a better mother. It made me a better wife. It made me a better teacher. It made me a better preacher. It made me a better evangelist. Praise God. It made me a better friend. Hallelujah. Praise God. I thank God for those moments of prayer, of changing me and moving me yeah. through his manner. Glory to God. I don't know if y'all feeling this, but praise God. And, and one of it, I got Jesus, man, deep down in my soul. Yeah. Look at Jesus here. You can come to church, carry the right Bible, hear sermons, sing songs, pray prayers, praise God, do all the religious stuff you want. But you will never be saved until you come to Jesus for yourself. I had to come, sister, for myself, sister Sylvia. I had to come to Jesus for myself. I, Mama wasn't there no more. She was gone on the go. I had to come to Jesus for myself. No one can do it for you. Thank God for saved moms and dads. But children cannot ride into heaven on their parents' coattails. Grandparents that love Jesus are a blessing, but you have to be saved for yourself. I tell my grandchildren all the time, you got to get your own testimony. Yes. I got mine. You got to get yours. Yes. I tell them all the time, you got to get yours. And your testimony ain't going to be good. Some of them going to be harsh and cold. Mine's what? Well. I got some hard testimonies that I had to go through. It was a learning experience for me. Amen. Praise God. Thank God I finally heard him. And come to my senses like the prodigal. Uh, daughter that I was. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Manna is a picture on number three. Manna is a picture of Jesus Christ. Here we go. It came to a uh, forsaken place. Jesus came to a forsaken place. Hallelujah. He came to a forsaken place. I wasn't thinking about Jesus when Jesus came to me. Amen. I knew how I had been raised. I knew how I had been raised in the church and before the Lord. Praise God. But I wanted to be out in the world. I wanted to go dance. I wanted to hang out with friends. Praise God. I wanted to hang out with who I wanted and the boyfriend who I wanted. I wanted to do my own thing. Come on, saints of God. Y'all know what I'm saying. Don't play like you put it two shoes on. I know I wasn't. I was not a good two shoes. Amen. Praise God. I had a good heart. Praise God. Hallelujah. I wasn't a good two shoes. Good heart ain't gonna get you in heaven. You got to confess. The Bible says confess your sins. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how you get in there. And confess that Jesus Christ is your what? Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I didn't know that thing. I, I couldn't confess it all the way like I wanted to. Praise God. Amen. I look at this. He came to a forsaken place. He came to deliver people who had no hope of delivering themselves. He came to set the captives free of sin. Thank God Jesus came to where we were. Praise God. Yeah. He came to the lost, the sinful, the damned. He came to us in Mark, according to Mark 2, 17. On here, and this is what Mark 2, 17 said. On here and this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Yeah. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Yeah. He ain't come to call the righteous. He come to call the sinners. I was a sinner. He come to call me. He came to our walk. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
get back to work today because I'm off with this. Bear with me. Foolish people. They were tired of God's plan and God's way. They did not deserve his blessing. When you get like that, you don't deserve God's blessing. I want God's instructions. He sent those foolish people the food they needed. So get the worms and the maggots out of their mouth. He didn't let the foolish people alone. So it was for Jesus he came to the people that wanted nothing to do with him. According to John 1 and 1. He came to people that hated him, mocked him, ultimately crucified him. Yet he came to them anyway. He came in love, grace, and forgiveness. He came to offer them eternal life and they could only believe. He makes the same offer to us every day today. He's still coming to us when we don't want it. We want to ignore it. We want, oh God, I, I tried that. I don't know. I ain't ready to do that, Lord. I ain't ready. I let that be the last thing I do. I know you're talking to me, Lord, but I, I ain't ready to do that. I'm not, I'm not ready to give it all. Yet. I ain't ready for you to tread on all the Mari and the marshy places of my heart, Lord. I ain't ready. I got some places in my heart. I ain't ready for you to trade there, Lord. Cigarettes was one of them. Lord, this smoking is the only thing I got. It's the only thing I got, Lord. You want, you want me to give smoking up to me? Yes. I've called you to preach. Preacher shouldn't be smoking. Yeah. They should be telling the truth. Speaking the truth. They shouldn't be insane. They shouldn't be defiling the body. Oh, my God. Come on now, saints of God. I got to teach others not to file their bodies. I got to stop it too. Yeah. Oh God, look, look, let me tell you something. There is nothing, praise God, hallelujah, in your life that Jesus don't know that you're doing. Yes. He knows it all. He knows all about it. Yes. Let me tell you this. I wasn't looking for God. He was looking for me. Yes. He found me. He came to where I was. He found me. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Take the worms and the maggots out of your mouth and here's how we do it. Here's how we do it. I'm going to give you a prayer list. I'm going to give you some words that I used. Praise God. Hallelujah. To take, praise God, the worms and the maggots out of my mouth. I still pray these prayers. I still say these commands. I still give myself these thoughts. I still remind myself of this prayer that I'm about to teach you. This prayer, this, these sayings that I'm about to give you. Here's how to take the worms and the maggots out of our mouths. Scripture. The mind is Satan's playground, saints of God. And I had to tell myself that. My, that's, this is the battleground right here. The battle to pick up your mind is your mind. According to 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5. Although we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of warfare are not come, but mighty in God. The pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments in every high place and every high thing that exalts itself for the knowledge of God. These are instructions that God gave me. Bringing every thought into captivity for the obedience of Christ. I had to do that. If you look at the scripture that Brother Finney had read to you, 
retribution must be bound. Revenge and retaliation spirits must be bound. The lion and seducing spirits must be bound up. Deceiving spirits of deception must be In the name of Jesus, the church, we must bind up every root of fear. I mean, there's so much fear out there. Oh, my words, there's a lot of fear out there. We must bind up every fear, every doubt, every unbelief. There's a lot of unbelief going on right now. People don't know who to believe. That's why I say this is the time for the church to be the church. This is the time for people to get set up. If we would not fight amongst ourselves. We must bind up discouragement. Every deadly despair of depression must be bound. I hear so many people talking about mental health right now. Every spirit of depression must be bound. The spirit of pride, oh my God, just prevalent. Spirit of pride, rebellion, disobedience. That's what Israel's problem was disobedience. Anytime you got disobedience and sin in your life, you got worms in your bag. You got worms in and maggots in your mouth. Because they were, I just read you the scripture. God said, I would test them and see whether they will follow my instruction. In verse 4, from the very day. We're being tested. I'm going to say that again. This COVID, we're being tested in this COVID. God allowed this. Then no man said it. Stop looking for a man to say it. God allowed it. Let me share something with you. Everything, praise God, that go on in our lives, praise God, whether good or bad, has to be sifted through the nail-scarred hands of Jesus Christ's approval. Yes, yes. It has to come through his approval. COVID had to be approved by the Father. It couldn't have just come on us. Go back and read Job. In your spare time, go back and read. I'm going to do the sermon on Sunday on Go back and read Job. Job came with the sons of God one day and God said, where you going? I'm, I'm going to and fro. Back and forth through the earth. This is Satan talking to him. Seeing who I can devour. God. Have you tried my servant Job? That's what Satan said. He said, you got a hand around it. Oh boy, I can't even touch it. God had to give him approval to do what he did to Job. But Job came out in the end. He came out better than he had it. And more than he had it. Go over to God. Hallelujah. God has to prove everything, praise God, that's going on in your life. Listen to this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to hurry up. Praise God. What else we must bind? In the name of Jesus, we must bind every root of fear, doubt, unbelief, discouragement. Praise God. Yeah. Every death and despair, depression. Every spirit of pride, rebellion, disobedience. Mm -hmm. We must bind self-ego. Ooh, that's a lot of that. Mm -hmm. We must bind independence, unforgiveness, bitterness, lust of the flesh. We must bind all this stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to give you some instruction how to get the world in the name is out. We must loose in the name of Jesus. This is what we must loose in the name of Jesus. I told you what you must bind. Now I'm going to tell you what you must loose in the name of Jesus. We must loose in the name of Jesus his deliverance upon us. I want to be delivered out of this coat. We need to loose deliverance upon us. We need to loose, loose his freedom. Jesus' his freedom upon us. His liberation upon us. His peace upon us. We must lose his joy upon us. Yes, yes. Hope upon us. Gladness of heart. Praise God. I don't want sorrow in my heart. Praise God. I want gladness in my heart. We must lose love. Hallelujah. We must lose healing and wholeness. Yeah. All of this is for us. We must lose his mercy and his grace. Blessings and favor. We must lose the restoration of the years the locusts have eaten from us. Yeah. They've taken a lot from us. Ask the Lord to loose the restoration.
resurrection power of Jesus Christ yeah. upon us. Ask God to loose a mighty harvest of his blessings yeah. upon us. Of his boldness to witness. Hallelujah. To save souls for Jesus Christ upon us. Amen. Praise God. Ask God to loose those things. Yeah. His promises are yes and amen. According to the scriptures, praise God. 2 Corinthians 1 30. We know that Satan is a liar, but God has never lied nor broken a promise, ever. Yeah. I ain't never know if anybody here ever told God lying, broken promise. I ain't never know who broke a promise you. Or a covenant. According to Hebrews, praise God, it's 6 and 18. He never broke a covenant. He is the God of the second chance of to eternity. I had a second chance to eternity. When I was a young woman, young woman, praise God, I didn't do that. I knew God was in my life. I knew God was God. I was raised in the church. Praise God, but I was going astray. But God gave me a second chance to return. I confessed Jesus Christ when I was a young girl, six years old. Praise God. But I was baptized under the arrest of my mother. <laughs>
Jesus Christ in heavenly places. That's what that's called. Praying in agreement with Jesus Christ in heavenly places. And when we rule and reign from that position of divine authority, get the worms and the maggots out of our mind. In Jesus' name, we must come against every evil principality and spirit that has been trying to bind our finances, our ministry, our churches. Yeah. We must command Satan to loose his hold on the saints of God. Yeah. My God shall supply all of my needs, saints, according to the riches and glory in heaven, according to Philippians 4.19. In Jesus' name, you must tell Satan to lead and get thee behind you. Tell him. Don't be afraid. The word of God is against you, Satan. The blood of Jesus is against you, Satan. Spirits of drug, abuse, alcoholism, adultery, profanity, immorality must go out of our homes, out of our lives, hallelujah, out of our country, out of our city, out of our schools, in the name of Jesus. We must bind, we must, we must have the mind of Christ. We are free from the laws of sin and death. Sin does not rule or reign over us anymore. We must bind every spirit of strife and division and loose the spirit of love, joy, peace to fill our houses, to fill our communities, to fill our schools, to fill our city, to fill our country. America, get the worms out of your mouth. Let's take back America. Take back, praise God, what the devil has stolen, praise God, from us. Let's get prayer back into the schools. Let's pray that the parents can take back control of their children yes. learning. They be able to say, no, I don't want my child to take that class. Yes. I want my child to take this class. Yes. It gives control back to the parents. We need to pray. We need to buy this. Schools dictate the curriculum your child has to, what they want your child to take. You tell them what you want your child to have. Yeah. Let's get back to our knees and teach our children to get on their knees and have the mind of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. My house belongs to God. We must confess this. Our house belongs to God. The blood of Jesus is on our doorposts. We've been separated and redeemed, and we've declared all of our families shall be saved. That's the prayer we need to be praying. The blood of Jesus is over our doorposts. Satan don't own my household. We must lift up God's standard and shield over our house, over our families, over our ministry. We must declare that nothing unholy or unlawful will enter or to defile or harm us, our children, our grandchildren by any uh, member of our family. In Jesus' name, we will walk in the strength and the power of Almighty God. We are set apart and dedicated to proclaim God's word with power and authority, to pray for the sick, to set the captives free, those that are bound and oppressed by the evil devil. We have that authority to do that. If you are grumbling against what God does and allowed, allow, then you have worms in your Go. 
the times of this COVID storm to the Lord. Let's stop the grumbling, complaining, bickering, fighting amongst ourselves, one another, turning on one another, country divided. Let's stop it. Let's see what God has to say now. When we stop it, let's see what God's going to do. Let's see what God's going to do. He's got to start somewhere. He can start with this church right here. Stop grumbling. Stop complaining. Let's pray more. Let's pray more. If y'all want to pray, I, you know I like to pray. Call me. We can have our extra prayer night if you want. Praise God. We don't have to just put one prayer night. We can do an extra one. Praise God. Hallelujah. Prayer and the word should be the center of the church right now. Prayer and the word should be the center of the church. Let's stop the growth. It's testing time. Let's get the worms and the maggot out of our life. Can you imagine eating this for 40 years? And going through this trial and this test for 40 years. Somebody said to me the other day, this thing ain't going away no time soon. Mm -hmm. And they're starting to say that in the media. CDC is starting to say it. That's why they keep on talking about another booster now. A fourth one. We need to pray. I believe God can put a stop to this thing. If we return from our wicked ways. Hallelujah. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. Hallelujah. Turn from their wicked ways. You got to turn from the devil. You got to turn your back on your evil wicked ways. Turn from your wicked ways. I will heal. I think about it. Say, I heal you up. Land. Our land need healing. Our country need healing. There ain't no back door out of this thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You gotta go down, right down the middle. Just like Moses had to part the Red Sea. God wants to part this COVID. And we'll walk right down the middle. Unscathed, unharmed, and some untouched. Yeah. Ain't nobody gonna go. Ooh, God, I don't know about y'all, but I feel the Holy Ghost in my spirit. Praise God, hallelujah. I believe we can get through it unscathed, unharmed. we just thank you father we ask you lord god to bless lord god what's been said what's been done and maybe lord god to further your kingdom lord god jesus we ask you father god to let the word soak into our hearts into our minds into our soul into our spirit bless us oh lord god help us and show us how to get the worms and the maggots out of our manner the manner represents you father god Oh, God, it's round. It's eternity. There's no beginning and no end to it, Father God. We just want to say thank you, Jesus Christ, for dying on the cross for us and, Lord, is saving us, Lord God. We ask you, Father God, to show us how, Lord God, to be, Lord God, a powerhouse for Jesus Christ. Show us how, Lord God, to bind the enemy on every hand. Show us how to loose the blessings and the goodness of Jesus Christ from heaven. Lord, but certainly you have told us whatever you, Lord God, loose upon heaven, it's going to be loose, Lord, upon earth. Bless us, oh Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, to be obedient, to stop grumbling, to stop complaining about this thing that we're going through. Help us, Lord God, to get a peace or a resolve for it. Help us, oh Lord God, to not turn on one another and backstab one another, Lord God. Help us, O oh Lord God, to be the church, Lord God, hallelujah, that people need, Lord, right now. That they're seeking and they're looking for somebody to tell them the truth. Amen. Lord God, to point them back to the word. Help us, O oh Lord God, Jesus, and our children, Lord God, to learn and be taught the right things in school. Yeah. Help us, O oh Lord, and our country, Lord God, that we'll be truthful, Lord God. Hallelujah. Servants, Lord God, that we, Lord God, will seek the truth. Know the truth. Live the truth, O oh Lord, and speak the truth. Bless us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. 
help our community, help our homes, our families, help our country. Yes. Bless the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Show us that we need to go back to God, to yes. the basics of Jesus Christ. We're in a testing period. Help us to pass the test. Help us to pass the test. Yes. Don't let us grumble about what we're going through, but show us how to seek you, to pray more, and to stay in the word of God. Bless us. And as we go, Lord God, Jesus, you go with us. Until next week, be with us, Father God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 <clears throat> Praise God. God bless you. Praise the Lord.